Good morning, and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. Check here. Okay, I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the commission's weekly online event. Um, yes, we are a webinar and proud of it. <laughs> We've been doing it for almost 10 years now. So I think it's a successful format. I would us, say so. I would have to say. Um, so this is um, the Library Commission, Nebraska Library Commission's weekly online event um, where we cover anything that may be of interest to libraries. Um, uh, Encompass Live is broadcast live um, at 10 a.m. Central Time every Wednesday, every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. We do record the show every week, so you can always go to our website and um, check out our recordings when it's convenient for you. Um, and I'll show you at the end of today's show where um, you can see all those recordings. Um, we have, um, there will be a YouTube video of the recording. Um, any presentations, like in this case we have a PowerPoint, um, will be included. And any links that maybe were mentioned, URLs during the session will be included there for you as well. Um, both the live show and the uh, archives are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do um, share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues <laughs> who may be interested in any of our topics. They can sign up and um, join us for our live shows or go and watch any of our recordings. Um, as I mentioned just a second ago, um, doing this for 10 years almost. This is our ninth year, almost the end of nine years. <laughs> um, so we have a lot of old archive recordings in there. Um, we're librarians, so we save everything um, for posterity, <laughs> of course. Um, so um, be aware of that when you're looking at some of our recordings, you may find some things that are old topics, um, out of date information potentially. Um, but everything is dated, so you'll know, you'll know when it was actually presented and at that time. But we do keep everything on there for historical purposes, of course. Um, we do a mixture of things here on Encompass Lives book reviews. Day. interviews, um, many training sessions, demos, um, basically it's the only criteria is it is something library related, something libraries are actually doing, some service or product we think would be of use to you, some things they could be doing, and um, this is for any type of library as well. We are the Nebraska Library Commission, we're the state agency for all libraries in Nebraska, so um, public, academic, school, um, special museums, correctional, about anything, so um, we're pretty broad. <laughs> so you may find some topics that the head titles may look a little weird, but trust us, trust me, that everything comes around to libraries in the end. That is our only goal um, here. We do um, have guest speakers that do come in from outside the um, library commission or outside the state even, um, but we also have commission staff do sessions, and that's what we have today. Next to me is Sally Snyder, who many of you may know. She is the Children's uh, uh, Coordinator for Children and Young Adult Library Services here at the Nebraska Library Commission. And she is going to take us through some books for next year's summer reading program, Libraries Rock, um, which could have different um, interpretations. However, they do specify that this is Libraries Rock as in music. Mostly, I do have one book that talks about rocks. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. Oh, but list. somebody mentioned to me, oh, I oh, they have things more. about geology, maybe. I'm like, well, they did say, they do actually say what the theme is and then give it a, lo a motto type thing. Um, but sometimes you can get creative with it. You can go any direction you want to <laughs> in your library. If you want to do geology, go for it. It's okay. Yeah. All right. right. There's no strict mm -hmm. following a particular path. Yeah, nobody's going to come in. Like, there's no, no summer reading program police that are going to come in. No, they're not going to come <laughs> and shake their finger at you. Yes. Um, and I'll warn you right now um, at the beginning of the show so you can plan. Normally, this episode does run long, longer than our, our allotted hour that we normally have the shows for. Um, but that's okay. We run and um, own and run the program ourselves, so um, the software ourselves. So um, we will go as long as it takes for Sally to get through all of her titles. And if you guys do have any questions or anything you want to say, um, we will um, stick around for that as well. So the whole thing will be recorded. So if you do have to leave at um, when it hits the top of the hour at 11, that's fine. If you only allotted that an hour in your time, um, we will record and keep things going until you're done. You can always come back later and watch the rest of the show that you missed. But just want to give you a heads up that typically these ones do run a little long. We have a lot of good books to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So um, I think I will then um, hand over to Sally. Thank you. Before I start on the list, and right now the list is not there. We just have the draft list from conference. But 
later today we'll get the list I'm working from right now up on our web page mm -hmm. and you'll be able to see that under handouts if you search handouts and then click on the link you'll find the list mm -hmm. that will be up later today um, these are books that I've run across either from books that publishers have sent to the Library Commission for me to look at and possibly review. I can't read all of them. It's not physically possible. Plus, if I don't do other work, I get in trouble. <laughs> but, and then also, things that people tell me about that I didn't run across. There's a couple of librarians who are very helpful in saying, Sally, did you see this book? And no, I didn't, but now I know I can use that too. Mm -hmm. Plus, I look at the library and I scoured the bookstores for titles too. But always there are favorite titles that I didn't run across. So if your favorite book isn't on my list, send me an email and I'll put it on the list for the summer reading program workshops that will be coming up uh, Friday, this Friday. First one is this, this Friday, Friday, right here in the then, um, January and beyond. So I like to include things that people are excited about because that means other librarians and kids and teens will be excited about them. I also read from a piece of paper because otherwise it will, I will be, be still talking at 3 o'clock and nobody <laughs> wants me to talk that long. Um, so this kind of keeps me focused on the points I want to make and then we move on to the next book. So we're going to start with fiction picture books. And the first one is called Noisy Night by Max Barnett. So of course, he's terrific. <laughs> This is a book about the several floors in a building in the city. And it starts on floor one, and a boy asks, what is going la, 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 up above my head? And you can see him on his bed, and you can see just a little bit of the floor above him. You can just see some legs there. And so this is a kind of a guessing story, as well as a, you know, things are happening on each floor. It turns out the next floor has a man singing opera. Each scene shows that hint. Up it goes from one to another, including a baby, a crow, a girl playing trumpet, cheerleaders, a couple dancing with music, and more. And at the top, an old man who yells, go to bed! It's fun, and predicting what is above the current floor will keep the readers and listeners guessing. Okay, Pete the cat, he's everywhere. <laughs> Pete has been learning a new dance, the cool cat boogie. But whenever, whenever he hears music, he just has to dance. But Grumpy Toad tells him he is dancing wrong. Then Pete asks others one by one, how do you dance? And they tell him. So we have a ballerina there, and then we have the, the duck who dances differently. But he tries their dances. It's never right. Finally, Wise Old Owl helps Pete realize that the important thing is to be himself and dance however feels right. So he's happy again, and the there's a dance steps on the back end papers for others who want to learn Pete's dance. Oh, cool. You, said you can dance around the room after you read the story. <laughs> the village of La Paz was full of singing all day long. Mothers, people in showers, dogs in fountains, all sang in their own way. This made it hard to get things done, so the people fired the mayor. Don Pepe promised quiet when he was elected. Slowly, over time, all sounds were banned. Hmm. Seven years later, a rooster and his family came to town. He sang, Kiki Ricky, in the morning, as roosters usually do. But from then on, it was a contest between the rooster and the mayor. Until finally, the people of the village stood with the rooster, and Don Pepe left town. An author's note carries the idea that as we grow, we learn to temper our opinions. But there are people who resist and sing out the truth, mm. which is a nice thing to remember. Captain Alfred is sailing home, bringing some ducks, his fiddle, and a new egg close to hatching. But a storm hits and everything is lost. On shore, a woman waits, hoping. The egg hatches, floating in the fiddle case. Named Alfred Fiddle Ducklin by the captain before he hatched, Alfred finds the fiddle in the water and he loves its sound. Will the duckling find shore? And what waits there for him? And where is the captain? All to be answered. This is very clever. It's, it's playing with words. It turns out to not actually be about a musical instrument, but that's okay because the, the words inspire. An unnamed person asks questions like, who is playing frisbee? B -E -E is in red. An illustration shows a frisbee flying through the air with a bee riding on it. 
<laughs> Occasionally, a girl asks, have you seen my drum pet? And P-E-T of the word is in red. And she keeps receiving no for an answer until she finally sees her trumpet, an elephant. So it's kind of unusual looking at how words are formed and what parts of words might mean something else to be a good um, book to use with um, kids. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have to go to a different page for this. First, I'll talk about yes. it. After everyone is bed, in bed, the fruits climb out of the fruit bowl, ready for fun. The banana is the DJ, and all the fruits have their special way of dancing. It's silly fun with a can't miss me. Listen to it. You will soon have a room full of dancers, and I've given you the URL on the handout when you get the handout. So we have to go find, because I, oops, I wanted to have it. Oh, oh I could have done escape. That's it. And then sit at the bottom of the There we go. Okay. Or on Ruby Joe. You'll get Ruby Joe. So here, if you just go to the, the URL that, again, I've given to you, there is Kitchen Disco. And it has part of the book, not the whole story in it. It's skipped, but we'll just play a little bit so you can hear, hopefully hear some of the music. skips the middle and then till the end. So not all of the fruits are in the video, mm -hmm. but um, they are all in the book. So I can do from current slide. Okay, thank you. So Kitchen Disco is a lot of fun, and it's good just to read, or if you have the, the opportunity to play the music, the kids will enjoy that too. Mm -hmm. The babies have just arrived at daycare, and no one is sure what they want to do at first when Benny, new to the group, comes in the door. He organizes them with drums and sticks, and soon they are marching out the door and into the grocery next door. Don't worry, the adult is following behind. <laughs> they grab items and eat them, make a mess with toilet paper, and then soon begin to droop. They return to daycare just in time to fall asleep in a pile. The teacher lets the babies explore while the store owner is a little overwhelmed. Rhyming text will pull listeners along with the babies, and Dyer's illustrations are wonderful. Gus Grimley has, um, his illustrations add humor and upbeat energy to this rendition of the familiar song. Animals included are the expected ones, except what's in the barn? Oh yeah, I will say that. <laughs> the artist note reveals that he grew up on a century old Nebraska farm and he did his share of chores. So I think that that connection is also a fun thing to point out to kids. And there are some photographs of, you know, older photographs of his family. Wow. in the back too so that's, that's cool also fun. plus you got to sing the song when you read the of course yes <laughs> little wolf and his father went to the top of the hill for little wolf's first time to howl his father demonstrated the proper technique oh then it was little wolf's turn the first time he was so happy and excited he howls oh i'm howling howling but his he was too excited. His father says, okay, now that was, but really this is how you have to do it. And he demonstrates again. But little wolf howled, oh, dippity dippity skippity scoopity scoop, woo, 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 using a scat style approach. Father corrects him again, but then the next time little wolf howls in a scat style howl, his father joins in and he does that too. It's great fun. And I think the kids will, of course, immediately start scat howling themselves. <laughs> the story, everybody can give it a try and go skibby bobbity if they want to. Then we have Groovy Joe. Groovy Joe, this first book is called Ice Cream and Dinosaurs. Groovy Joe has his guitar, a tub of ice cream, and a spoon. What could be better? He starts to sing when a little dinosaur knocks down, knocks on the door, knocks it down, glaring, he's holding a spoon. Joe says, it's awesome to share. We, and then he repeats next with a big dinosaur and then a huge dinosaur, but then, the ice cream runs out. What will Joe do now? 
And take note of the sunglasses wearing squirrel in many of the illustrations. He's not mentioned in the story, but he is there. And once again, we have somewhere to go for Food and Joe. <clears throat> Here's this story and the next one is about Groovy Joe as well, called Dance Party Countdown. And if you just go to Groovy Joe Stories, scholastic.com, here, here's the how the top of the page looks. And when you go down just a little bit, then you get a song, sure. Meet Groovy Joe. And here's the disco party countdown that, that you can play too, also, mm -hmm. like the other one. So, there's a little bit of disco party. play a little bit of disco party because that's, um, no, it's just my home. Hello, I am Eric Liu, author of Groovy Joe Dance Party Countdown. This is Groovy Joe. We're about to have big fun. <laughs> Rudy Joe was totally funny. He's a song singing, tail wagging party of love. And he sang this song Disco party, Disco party, Disco party, Disco party. Disco party. Disco party. Knock, knock. One. One more dog is going to disco with you. How? So that's just again fun, and that fun current. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the second book, just dance party countdown. And it says download the song yes. on the cover. Cover there. Cover, yeah. Tells you where to go in the book too. So as you saw, and and the one dog then two, and then four dogs knock at the door, and they all have instruments, and they all dance and sing and have a great time. And again, you can go to that page and on, on the web and play the music for the kids, too. And then they're singing and dancing your polka dot pants, because everybody loves polka dot pants. And this is, I think, book two of the nuts. Up there you can see it says the nuts, and the family are all nuts in the literal sense. So this book starts with, Hazel loved to sing and dance, and Hazel loved her po polka dot pants. She tries one after the other, her dad, her mom, her brother, but no one will join her. They're all busy doing other things. So what does she do? She calls grandma net, and soon everyone is singing and dancing. And again, um, you can play music for this one too. Yeah, there's another essay in the front of this book to download free song and disco dance, yeah. That's nice that all of us have that already. Yeah, so when you get the handout, you'll have the link to that as well. It's all the, any of these that have that kind of extra content available. It's nice to have information for that right on the cover. The rhythm of rain using onomatopoeia throughout is a wonderful reminder of nature in its own special rhythm. Follow it, follow it up with some clapping, clapping, pencil clicking, or other similar sounds to replicate the rain. Elmer is a well-known patchwork elephant. But he was on a walk when Rosie came along and she was humming a catchy tune. When they parted, Elmer was humming it too. Soon everyone is humming the tune and it's beginning to drive them all crazy. <laughs> Soon, um, well, fortunately, Elmer had an idea to get rid of the tune and it worked. A couple of clever incidents come at the end of the story, which also makes it fun. This book can tell you how to get rid of earworms. That's awesome. Music that those are a horrible a scourge. <laughs> right. It can be terrible. And this has an idea for you to give it a try. Yeah, and great. then uh, just after they they worked that out, another animal, I think it's the monkeys come along and say, What was that tune again? We really like that tune and I don't remember. Don't even remember that. Because they didn't want to all have it in their hands again. This is beautifully done. Of course it's by illustrated by James Ransom, so they are. This version takes place in New York during the Harlem Renaissance. Marie, who is the Clara of this version, is not ready to join the music, but after her dream, where she had to take action, she picks up a drum and begins to rap on it. So she has been, um, her dream is, this, this, in a way, the standard nutcracker dream, but she has to step forward and help out. And I, and I liked that idea in this book, too. 
This is an older book. It's a call, called the Top Honor book. And beginning with the trombone, one after another, a total of 10 instruments appear together on stage playing beautiful music. And it also names the term from solo to non-net, which is for nine. Mm -hmm. It's a classic, and you might already have that in your life. Mm -hmm. um, you heard about this book a couple, maybe a, a year or two ago when it first came out. Let's see, it came out in 2016. So. One day Raj, a young boy, plunked on the keys of his family piano, just enjoying the sounds. His father signed him up for lessons, and he learned so much. But as he learns, he enjoys less, until one day, he leaves the piano alone. When his father is old and ill, Raj returns home and plays again for his father, not a classical song, but the one he made up, playing from the heart. Dylan and his mom are on their way somewhere through busy streets in a subway station, and Dylan hears wonderful music in the station and wants to stop, but his mom hurries him along. That night, they hear the music again on the radio. A note at the back of the book states that the violinist Joshua Bell had played in the subway station that day, and only a few stopped to listen. Children were the most responsive, but were almost always hurried away by an adult. We need to let children hear and enjoy the music. Yeah. I really loved this book. And I didn't know that happened. It's like based on a true story. Yeah. Raina accidentally damages her grandfather's vihuela that hangs on the wall in her mother's cafe. He had played it in a mariachi band before he died. So sorry, she picks it up and hurries off to try to find someone who can fix it. But she finds much more instead. It's a celebration of family, culture, and music. And in Spanish and English. It was the winner of the New Voices Award by Lee and Lowe. Mm -hmm. That's, it's a, came out in 2015. It's a lovely book. The Beat Bugs is a series on Netflix TV. I have not seen it, but um, it's based on um, songs made famous by the Beatles. So mm -hmm. this is an early book. So even if the kids at your library are not watching the show, this book has a good message of moving to a new place, being yourself, making new friends, finding welcome and acceptance, and music. So that's fun. If there is dance, you know there is music, right? Of course, hopefully. A ballet class is surprised by the new student, a full-grown alligator. But the teacher in class proceed, aside from buying a big alligator chow, just in case. <laughs> they call her Tanya. Her tail causes some problems, so the teacher made her star in the original production of The Legend of the Swamp Queen, with her tail tied up to her neck. Everyone danced wonderfully, but there was no Tanya at the next class, or for weeks after. Then they received a map and an invitation to a performance in the swamp. Tanya and her swamp friends performed the ballet. Ah, so it's kind of a fun come around again. Some picture book nonfiction include Tito Puente, Mambo King. It's told in English and Spanish of a boy who loved to bang the pots and pans, won his church's star of the future for four years in a row. Played stickball, joined the Navy, attended the Juilliard School of Music, and grew up to lead his own band. The art conveys his energy, actions, and enthusiasm for music and the drums or timpani. I noted the back of the book gives some additional information. And I just love this cover because I can just see him banging on those drums. <laughs> yeah. I love the art. This is a picture book biography of Louis Armstrong conveying his love for music and of his family's struggles to make ends meet. As a child, he borrowed five dollars and bought a cornet from a pawn shop. At age 11, after getting in trouble several times, he was sent to the Colored Waifs Home for Boys, where he eventually learned to play the cornet. At 14, he was released. He worked hard during the day and in the evening began his musical career learning from the prominent Joe Oliver, a band leader. And this book is really about his love of music, his hard life, and his hard work to make music. A memoir of the author's childhood, her grandfather was a well-known mariachi musician in Mexico, and once a year he would visit his grandchildren and their parents in Dallas, Texas, playing and singing music. He encouraged them to sing through the bad times, since singing gladdens the heart. The author knows that this is a line from the famous song, Solito Lindo. This is a Let's Read and Find Out science series book, Sounds All Around. It's been updated and has new illustrations. 
Starting with singing, snapping fingers, clapping, and talking, the author explains how sounds, sound waves, and how our vocal cords work and how we hear. It's good information for a musical summer. Also an excellent science choice for library collections and has a find out more section in the back with suggested experiments. So it's kind of a, several things in one book. Mm. A picture book biography of Melba Doretta Liston, born in 1926 in Kansas City. <clears throat> at the age of seven, she joined the music class at school and chose the trombone for her instrument. At eight, the local radio station had her perform on the air. After a move to California, she joined the high school's music club and was soon the star player. She went on the road at age 17 where she joined Gerald Wilson's band and experienced the music, music scene as well as prejudice. She became a composer, wrote arrangements, and worked on recordings for many well-known bands. Melba loved music. Wonderful. Brief story. Juan Garcia Esquivel loved sounds of all kinds. He could play the piano by age 10. His family moved to Mexico City, and by age 14, he earned two pesos for each 15-minute radio show on which he played the piano. Over his life, he explored and blended sounds to share with everyone. He loved finding new to him and unique instruments. He became quite popular, and he changed his name to Esquivel with the exclamation point. <laughs> Known as the space, space Age Sound Artist in the 50s and 60s, he was extremely popular. And I'm sure we've heard his sound in, sounds in old movies from that time. But you don't know who, that it was about the artist himself. Well, yeah, you don't know that. Interesting. Some beginning readers. This is one of several newer titers in the beginning reader format featuring Mr. Cooper's class from the well-known early chapter book series. AJ in Mr. Cooper's class cannot figure out what talent he has for the classroom's talent show. His main rival, Andrea, is a know-it-all and has several talents she plans to display in the show, including playing the flute. AJ is last on the schedule and still unsure what he can do, but when it's his turn, he stands in front of the class explaining that he is not talented, but he is funny and he doesn't know. <laughs> So he was successful. Three connected stories are included in this beginning reader. In the first, Henry is practicing his drums and dreaming of being a rock star when his mom asks him to stop since she has to work at home. In the second story, Henry takes his old drum outside and soon he and the neighbor kids are enjoying playing freeze tape. In the third story, after dinner, Henry looks for something quiet to do because his mom needs to finish her work. But when she is done, they both dance to music until bedtime. Henry and his mom are white, but the neighborhood kids represent a variety of ethnicities and cultures. And one of the five books in the Pig in a Wig series is called What This Story Needs is a Bang and a Clang. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. In rhyming text, the Pig in a Wig constructs state, a stage for the, the band and soon animals, each with their own instrument, not the steps making their individual sounds. The simple story has plenty of onomatopoeia, abrupt, a jingle, and a doom, doom, doom. Ten animals are playing well together in, under the baton of the pig and the wig until a mouse appears with a very small tuba. The elephant panics and pandemonium ensues. All is well when the pig in the wig calms everyone, welcomes the mouse, and music again falls the air. Elephant and Piggy. Piggy is excited to show jerk. Jer Gerald, her new trumpet, and for him to listen to her play it. But the noises she makes cannot be called music. Gerald kindly tells her that the trumpet is loud, shiny, and she holds it well, because he's looking for positive things to tell her. Mm -hmm. When prompted for more, Gerald explains that they are friends, and he will tell her the truth. It is not music. She counters with, I am trying to speak elephant on the trumpet. She wasn't trying to make this <laughs> very fun. Some early chapter books, Tales from Death of Woods Drive, number four, Eugenia Lincoln and the Unexpected Package. The tough, no-nonsense Eugenia Lincoln it receives a package containing an accordion. Oh, why? Who sent it? She calls the company to return it, but they say she must keep it, and they will send it back to her if she tries to return it. Coincidentally, a man stops by the house, and one of his many skills is to teach people to play the accordion. Baby Lincoln, her sister, suggests that she learn a song. Eugenia is completely out of her normal element, and finally she gives it a try, because everyone needs some fun now and then. She actually likes it. <laughs> Here we go. Here's our rock story. 
Jada Jones, this is book one in a new series about Jada Jones. Her best friend has moved away and now Jada wants to avoid school. Then her teacher starts a new team project on rocks and minerals. This is Jada's favorite subject. But one member of her team nixes all of Jada's ideas and seems not to like her. What can she do? It's a good title about developing friendship and understanding, and this one is all about rocks and minerals. The illustrations are in black, white, and purple, and there is one on most two-page spreads. Fiction for grades approximately two to five or six or so, because we all know everybody reads at their own level of mm -hmm. speed. Yes, none of this is in stone. No. Anybody who's interested can read them. This is the fourth book about the Penderwicks, and in this one, the focus is on Batty, who is now in fifth grade. She loves to play piano and practice for her lessons, but now a new talent has arisen. Her voice is amazing. All of this is entwined with normal family issues and changes, including Batty taking on the task of walking her neighbor's dog. She is still grieving over the death of their own family's dog, making this task especially hard. This is the first book of two so far. Mac, Mackenzie, age 12, is head over heels for Xander, lead singing for an up-and-coming new group called Perfect Storm. When she gets to travel with the group because her mother was hired as their road trip manager, she can barely breathe. Using a diary format with occasional graphic novel inserts, along with some black and white drawings, readers will discover, along with Mac, that teen idols and road trips are not entirely the stuff of dreams. Twin girls are likely to jump on the bus with Mac. Book two, a new up-and-coming brother duo are booked to travel with and open for Perfect Storm. But due to some subterfuge and misunderstandings, there is soon a feud between the two group groups, and Mac may not be able to help diffuse the situation. One of the interesting things in here is on page 290, the father of the troublemaker states he is sending her to Grandma's pig farm in Nebraska. Hey. So, yeah. What? <laughs> Okay. Nothing wrong with that. Big farms that yes. This is set in England, and it's kind of these are real in some ways. Frank, Francesca Patel's summer stinks. Her cat is missing, her best friend is away, and the school bully is stepping up his harassment of her. When oddball outcast Nick Underbridge helps her and invites her to his home, she agrees. It is an oasis for her, colorful art by Nick's father, and beautiful haunting music that she just has to hear again. There's something that pulls her back to Nick's house. Quietly snooping, she finds a leech with a connection in the basement to another world where a troll is playing the music. It turns out that this troll is actually Nick's mother because he looks different. From ah. He's bigger, he has kind of a flat face, and people mm -hmm. say he smells and things because you know how teens and kids can be. Frank is told by, told by a special agent that the leech wing must be closed or it will mean disaster for our world and she charges Frank with the task because she can go in the house. That would mean Nick would never see his mother or hear the beautiful, and she would never hear the beautiful music again. But she has to consider what she's been told about the danger to life. So it's haunting music and also a fantasy about connections to other worlds. Girl versus Boy Band. Okay, this is book one titled The Right Track, Lark is 12, she's in seventh grade. She is missing her dad and her former home in Nashville since her mom divorced him and moved to LA to start her own record company. Lark is a songwriter and plays the guitar to perfect her songs, but is far too shy to perform in front of people. Best friend Mimi supports and encourages her. Then her mom signs up an up and coming British boy band, they are 15, rather than that. And she brings them to live in the mansion that she can't really afford to prep them for starting. Meanwhile, Lark, Lark's eighth grade crush, Teddy Reese, has asked her to play guitar for him when he sings at the school talent show. Can she do? Will mm -hmm. she be able to step up on the stage? Book two is the high note. Mm -hmm. Lark is now right after Christmas break. The video of Lark, her best, best friend Mimi made, has been a sensation on YouTube. And now she makes a second one to determine if Lark will tell her mother about her music. Along with that, in this book, Lark's crush, Teddy, is now part of the, the band because one guy left and went home again to England. So she has that crush nearby all the time, too. So things are shaky. <laughs> <laughs> On 
On another <laughs> note, <laughs> like, yeah, watch out. <laughs> Jay is in sixth grade. He loves hockey, and it all comes naturally to him since he's been playing for years. Something that does not come naturally to him is the saxophone. The only instrument left on the table after the rest of his class took turns choosing the one they were going to play for the year. He is convinced he will flunk music class. There's no way around it. The book has a good balance between hockey, the saxophone, and other sixth grade pursuits. And Jay lives in Bobby Orr's hometown of Perry Sound, Ontario. Mm -hmm. And he and his family are died in the war. Bobby Orr fans. Yeah, I see his little afterward by him in the book. Yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> fun. I didn't point that out. A new book by Patricia McLaughlin. I have an advanced reviewer's copy that you can see up there. Sylvie Bloom was in the fourth grade. Her mom was an opera singer until she met the man who would become Sylvie's father in a Wyoming cafe. It is an idyllic life. Mom sings to the cows, the pigs, and the chickens. The love is obvious. It is everywhere. But when her mom hears from her former singing partner, Sylvie worries that her mom will want to leave to be famous again. It's a story of love, being content, and embracing life as, as it is. The back of the advanced reader's copy states that the book is set in Nebraska, but the only state mentioned when I read it was Wyoming. Hmm. So I have to look at a final copy of the book to see what it says on the back. I haven't there might it. be some changes to be made, or they're still yeah. figuring out where it's going to be set. So I'm really hoping it was in Nebraska, but it's not clear at this time. Although 12-year-old Malou's parents are divorced, they all live in the same town, and she spends time with both of them. Now she must move from Florida to Chicago without her dad, while her mother completes a two-year visiting professorship. Malou loves punk rock music like her dad, and making zines about whatever is on her mind. Finding her place in a new city, school, and neighborhood helps Malou realize that she is still herself. Mm -hmm. And there are interspersed throughout the book are the, some of the zines that she's made about whatever's on her mind. Mm -hmm. She is, her mother is Hispanic and her father is white, and she is um, really just happy being herself. Mm -hmm. This is a full-color graphic novel. Victoria and Katie, her younger sister, attended boarding school thanks to scholarships. Katie is loud and vivacious and does not care what people think of her. Victoria is shy and quiet and very concerned what people think of both of them. Katie is a talented pianist, while Victoria is going to try out for the soccer team. In the background, or underground, nefarious trouble is about, however. Little ghost, who is harmless, knows <coughs> excuse me, that Molly's father will soon have to take a child's life to give to Modi to keep him alive. Who he will choose and what can be done about it are questions that the ghost has. So there's this um, horror, I guess, type sign. It's not too creepy with touches of being yourself and trying your best. So things come out just fine. Hamster mm -hmm. This is book number four about Hamster Princess, and it's another adapted fairy tale as the author has been doing with this series. This one is a play on Jack and the Beanstalk. Yeah. Magic beans, a goose, strings, who is a music playing hamster harp called a harpster, and a giant. Harriet is happy to rescue them all if she can manage it with some help from her best friend Wilbur and her battle quail Mumfrey. It's humorous and clever with a couple of unexpected turns, and fractions do show up occasionally as Harriet is fond of them. This is the first book about Stick Cat, Stick the cat tale yeah. of two kitties. Stick Cat and his friend and neighbor Edith, who's a bit ditzy, live high in an apartment building in the city. They follow a routine of getting together after their people leave through a hole in the wall in the bathroom cabinets. Their usual day is not exciting, but today is an exception. They are listening to the piano tune tuner from the court, from the store across the street when a cement truck hits a light bulb and vibrations cause the piano lid to fall on the tuner's arms, trapping him. So they are off to the rescue, riding across the street in an apron pocket on the clothesline. Because they have always enjoyed listening to the piano tuner play music to check the piano sound. It's one of their favorite combinations. This is a wonderful book. Clayton is devastated when his grandfather dies. He is the one who had taught him to play the blues and encouraged him. Clayton takes his harmonica, they call it a blues harp, to the subway after his mother gives away his grandfather's things, even his favorite guitar he had promised to Clayton. He hopes to catch up with the men his grandfather played with called the Bluesmen, but trouble arrives instead as some young hustlers hop the train and soon Clayton is playing music with them. 
adventure and a new understanding overtake him, and soon enough he finds his way home with the help of his father. Cadence 10 is called Mouse, which she hates mm -hmm. by everyone since that is what her mom called her before she left to pursue her singing career when Cadence was seven. Katie has a lovely voice but is so shy she stands in the back of the baby choir at church. She wants to join the youth choir with her two best friends but will have to audition in order to be accepted. Promises to God and to her friends are overwhelming her at times. Then a new choir director comes to the church. Will that make a difference? Her shyness is tangible and readers will empathize. Some nonfiction for upper, the upper elementary grades. I love this book, Trombone mm -hmm. Shorty. It's a 2016 Caldecott Honor Book and a Coretta Scott King Illustrator Award winner. Growing up in New Orleans means being surrounded by music. This picture book autobiography tells of Troy's love of music, how he came to be called Trombone Shorty, and his encounter with Bo Diddley after he played along with the band while in the crowd. Bo called him up to the stage and they played together. He now has his own band and keeps an eye out for other young musicians. This is also fine for younger listeners interested in music. So, so there's a picture of him up on stage with Bo Diddley, and this kid looks about four years old. <laughs> and he has this trombone. I mean, it's just crazy. It's wonderful. This is a, a completely different different topic. A brief history of her life and love of music. Segregation and unfair practices are noticed, and then in 1939, the chance to sing a song written by Abel Miracle a song about a lynching. She sang, sang it, then left the stage. Everyone was silent until slowly the crowd stood and applauded. It became her song, and the words of the song are included at the back of the book. Cool. And how it, it sings about trees in the South have a strange fruit mm -hmm. that someone hanging there. So, tough stuff. A brief look at George Gershwin, his love of music and creating the Rhapsody in Blue from the many sounds he hears around him mixing classical ragtime jazz and blues together, plus the sounds of the train as he's listening, clackety clack, and other things. There's a quote from him at the beginning of the book, I frequently hear music in the very heart of noise, which is really fascinating. So um, this is kind of, a, again, a, a more of an esoteric story about sounds and things, but it's, it's interesting. And then we have, of course, the Who Is or Who Was mm -hmm. series, of, of this batch here, I read What is Rock and Roll, and it does, it has basic information highlighting several famous stars, starting with Elvis and up through Michael Jackson and, and Bruce Springsteen, etc. There are plenty of illustrations, as this series has. Most librarians are familiar with this series, and so I, of the ones that I received to review, these are published last year or this year, so they're the most, you might have some in your collection already that have yeah, music, musicians in them, so we'll take a look. Look through the ones you have, you might find, you'll find other ones, yeah. So, some teen titles, and starting with fiction for younger teens. Told in Tank of Poetry, which is explained at the back of the book, Garvey is not interested in sports at all. His dad keeps trying to pique his interest in becoming an athlete and is not able to drop the topic. Garvey knows he is not an athlete, but he is not certain who he is. He faces boys at school due to his weight and his awkwardness. Finally, Garvey's best and only friend since first grade guides him to chorus at school, where he finds his, his place and a second friend. His wonderful voice is valued and his confidence grows. Now his dad has something in common with him at long last, since many years ago, he sang all day. So it wasn't really that he had to be an athlete, it was just the only thing his father could think of to connect with him. Mm -hmm. Self-taught Sam, Samantha, age 12 in sixth grade, can only think of drumming. Beats keep her awake at night. She wants to try out for jazz band next year, but she needs better equipment and some lessons, and she has zero money. She makes a couple of bad choices and then hopes for the best rather than face the music right away which is pretty typical of teens yeah. and adults at times. Yes. <laughs> and we always know that it would have been very, just based the music in the first place. But she does get a couple of breaks, and she gets a person who teaches her how to play the drums. Another tough one. Sparrow is 14, and she has anxiety problems and depression. She copes by flying with the birds in her mind. 
When she is found on the edge of the Rufford School, everyone thinks she was going to commit suicide, but she wasn't, she was flying. Now she must visit a therapist, and she at first refuses to talk because to say, I wasn't going to commit suicide, the next thing is, what were you doing? And she doesn't want to say, I was flying with the birds because that just sounds pretty whack on you. But slowly she begins to share her thoughts. When a chance comes to attend a music camp for four weeks of the summer, Sparrow goes, though her anxiety is high, away from home for four weeks. Doesn't know any, well, she knows one girl there, kind of, complete strangers. Her, her, she has big anxiety about making friends. It's always been hard for her. But this time she stays with it, and maybe things will get better. This is a beautiful book, Echo. Starting in fairy tale and moving into the real world, this is the story of a special harmonica and three of the people who played it. Set in different hard times, the rise of Hitler, the depression in the U.S., and in World War II. Readers will be caught up in each person's story and appreciate how the stories eventually interconnect. And it's a 2016 Newberry Honor. Magnolia 17 and Ford 17 are two of the ten lucky teens to be contestants on a new TV show, Spotlight. The show is a combination of a reality show and a talent show. The book starts with Magnolia and her mother arriving at the hotel where all will be held until the mansion is ready. Flashbacks tell of Ford's dysfunctional family and how he ended up becoming legally separated from them. Magnolia wants to reinvent herself and this is her chance to do that. Magnolia discovers a lot about herself and her mother and Ford, while Ford finds that change is hard and lying is true. Mm -hmm. This is great fun. <laughs> Middle schooler Julia Marks is short, but do not call her that. She is mad at her mother. She made her audition for and then be cast as a munchkin in the summer production of The Wizard of Oz, even though she cannot sing or dance much at all. Plus, she's a munchkin. <laughs> this is all because her younger brother was auditioning too. But she finds a couple of role models, one from the traveling professional cast, and one is her elderly neighbor. This summer may become a turning point for Julia. Claire is in eighth grade, and she's been harassed, being harassed at her middle school. She feels that she's not being taken seriously at home. And of course, her older brother, Matthew, is perfect, because everybody has a brother or sister who's a good one. <laughs> then, on top of that, she was having breakfast one morning with her beloved father when he suddenly falls over with a stroke and everything changes. And he's slow to recover. He is okay, but he can't communicate that. And she finds that the only thing she can do for him is to play the saxophone. And he tells her later how much that meant to him that she did that for him, but she doesn't know it at the time. Very touching. Lily is a high school sophomore. She is a songwriter, but believes she could never perform. Her best friend, Isabel, continues to encourage her. But one day in chemistry class, she idly writes some song lyrics on the desk, because other people have been writing on the desk. The next day, someone has written the next lines to the song. So, pretty soon, it grows from leaving notes, from that to leaving notes and sharing favorite indie group names and songs. Lily cannot figure out who else is sitting in that desk and if he or she knows who she is. It's a sweet romance for readers who are looking for something light with a bit of a twist. Singing and playing guitar in her traveling family's band has been fine for Bird Barrett, but challenges are on the way. When she fills in as a lead singer one night for her dad, a record promoter is in the audience and offers her a deal. What to do now? Should she leave her family's band behind or go back into the shadows where she feels safe and secure? Mm -hmm. There are two more books in the series, Road to You and The Way Back Home, which I haven't gotten a hold of. But some non there's only one nonfiction book so far that I've read across, and this one I talked about last year. Mm -hmm. This is a biography of Pete Seeger, who was a lifelong activist and advocate for the poor. And as the book says on page three, Though he came from financial privilege, he identified with those who had to make a living. He fought for the oppressed and poor all his life. And he, of course, made music for his life, too. So if anybody has any other, uh, any other um, yes. titles of nonfiction for teens, for, this is for the younger this ish is teens, right? right? Yeah. It's just all teens. Right? Yeah. Um, let me know. Let us know, yeah. yeah. Maybe more titles in there. We do. That's right. I didn't have any. It was sad. It's a fiction for some older readers. This is a wonderful book. 
It's told in three verse, Blade is almost 18, and he is the son of a famous rock star. His father is now more famous for his crazy acts while drunk or on drugs. His older sister is still supportive of their father, but not Blade, not anymore. On the day of his high school graduation, when he was ready to address the students and parents, his father created a spectacle by running a motorcycle into the stand. That evening, his sister reveals that Blade was adopted, and in no time, he is on his way to Ghana to find his birth mother. His mother is um, in Ghana. Well, she's from the U.S., but she's working there to help people. Blade has much to sort through the death of his adoptive mother when he was 10, his father's behaviors, his girlfriend who cheated on him, and he has nightmares that just won't let go. It's a look at the cathartic moments in the main character's life and what it reveals of his true self, and it is amazing. And it looks thick, but because it's in three verse, it reads very quickly. Right. Zach is 16, and he has let go from his band, but luckily he was soon taken on by a better band, and they go on a road trip for the summer, performing in Montana, Wyoming, in that area. The music goes well, but the band, called Bad Habit, has personal problems. Jealousy, self-importance, things like that. Zach is the youngest in the band, and he um, really, in some ways, has the most common sense um, mm -hmm. responsibility. But this is an experience for him for that summer that he knows will help him move his music, his drumming. Yeah. And I just finished this book last night. <laughs> <laughs> Set in Reading England, Charlie, short for Charlotte, Charlie Bloom, 16, stays under the radar at school. She and her best friend, Melissa, are in year 11. A former student from their school, Ollie, is now in a famous band called Fire and Lights, and he asked Charlie to come to a show and photo behind the scenes for their blog, since she did such a good job for a local band. From there, everything changes. Charlie is at first a god, and then begins to see how fame affects people's lives, and she is not unaffected by lead singer Gabriel, which is the one that every girl who loves the band is going crazy for. And then she um, begins to be, receive notes from people telling her that she shouldn't be with the band. She's in the background, but they still find out about it. And when I finished the book, I thought, well, this, this was, a, I guess this was an okay ending, but I, mm -hmm. I read the reviews then, and it says it's book one of a proposed trilogy, so ah. more could happen. Who knew? That's why you, the ending is probably a little, little like, it was not okay. an ending, or it is, is it but you think, gosh, I really wish she had something, something else. And I can't tell you now. <laughs> and there, I suppose there will be more books that will get to those something, so. something else. Yes. <laughs> and I just have a couple more. I'm calling them titles that were published earlier. So I don't know why I didn't put Zin Zin's in here, except, you know, I don't know. There's the Philharmonic is Dressed, which many of you might be familiar with, which is great fun because it's all about different people who are going to play in the Philharmonic, but this is about them getting ready. So we see people in the bathtub, we see people in their underwear brushing their teeth, we see people putting, getting dressed and picking up their instruments and going to down, riding the, the train or the, mm -hmm. the taxi down to where they're going to play. Seeing what it takes to do the to do the show. Yes, so that's kind of fun. And then there is, of course, Eleanor and Parnas, yes. which many people know of and have, and that part of how they connect with each other is through listening to each other's music on the bus ride to school. So music played an important part in getting them together. And guess what? We're done. And it's hey. not even quite 11, so. Wow. wow. How'd you do that? I don't know. <laughs> I stayed, awesome. with, I stayed mostly with my script, and I think how I did that. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> All right. So, um, yes, people saying, you did it, Sally. Good job. <laughs> um, so, anybody have any questions, thoughts, any um, other titles you want to share that you know of oh, that's or true. that you might be using? Um, actually, let's this thing back up. Sorry. That's okay. Um, at oh, your wow. libraries. Um, let us know. Type into the question section if you did. Um, we did just have some comments throughout the show saying you know, everybody loves Pete. Yes, Pete the Cat, which is yeah. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> great. Yeah, I like um, Ruby Joe. Joe yeah. too. He's pretty fun. And I see this one and um, is uh, by the author of Pete the Cat. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good point. And that's who was in that video with, with um, Ruby Joe. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. 
Um, so as we said, um, this will be, and actually let's get to the commission's homepage. That is. Yeah. Um, the handout with um, all the blurbs, right, will be. We'll soon be up. Yeah. So if you type handouts and it pops up down below and just hit enter and just go to its top thing that has the star by it, the rest of the Library Commission handouts. Mm -hmm. These are all my handouts so far. So anybody else can use it, but get this mm -hmm. So right here is the the draft list, which is not complete. So we'll add one that says Encompass Live mm -hmm. and then Hence Workshops. Right. And that'll help have my most recent and updated list, which is probably stand except for if people send me more titles for the Right, and we do have a couple there, actually a couple other Pete the Cat titles, it looks like. Um, oh, good. Um, yeah, uh, Liz from Scribner Public Library, uh, Pete the Cat and his four groovy buttons, and Pete the Cat rocking in my school shoes. Right, rocking in my school shoes, definitely. So Those there's other ones, and a lot of these you know, title uh, series sort of things, or right. just ongoing series. Um, that you can look into, yeah. Um, so there's some more for me, Pete. <laughs> I'll get on that. I bet the library has those titles. Oh, probably, yeah. Like I said, Pete, everyone loves Pete. <laughs> All right, so that will be posted up there. Um, I think, yeah, I will have a link to this page in the show recording as well. That's what I usually do every year when Sally does this session. Um, and her, as you can see here, new children's and teen books um, sessions. Um, we link back to this as well so you can get a copy of the um, listing as well. Pretty soon we'll have the ones with the words as we call them. Right. Which I haven't gotten yeah. done yet, but it'll have, it's only November. <laughs> Two more days. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just have the Legend of Rock Paper Scissors. Oh yeah, by Drew Dewalt and Adam Rex. Mm -hmm. So there's another one that you can get. Um, yes. All right. So um, there'll be some more titles that maybe will be added to your list. Some of any of these titles. Um, mm -hmm. And as we did mention, there is um, a summer reading program. Our first session workshop is Friday, Friday. Um, here in Lincoln. Um, I looked it up. That's through the Southeast Library System. Our registration is closed for that one. I guess they have uh, already, according to the website. So I don't know that there's a chance to get into that one. But you'll have other ones yes. that are, um, are there's scheduled. There's one scheduled in the second half of January. Is that a calendar yet? Or, or probably not. Um, One's in Broken Bow. No, that one's in Hastings. The January one's in Hastings. I don't think it's going to be. Yeah, we don't have it on our website yet. On our, but this is where it would, it and would be, be like, the, the, yeah. Probably the 20, Friday the 26th, I would, I would guess that's what it is. Mm -hmm. So these are the in-person workshops that she goes around the state doing. Of um, It's not just this. This is an all day, like the one on Friday is a, like 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. type right. thing, um, an all-day session. Um, yeah, so oh, this is, is yeah, this is what is happening. So you see, um, yeah, 10 a.m. to 3:30. Um, Dave Marsh. So there's other speakers and presentations involved with um, things you could use to do um, next year's summer reading program. So this is so you can get a head start. Well, you can get you know, you can do, you're already working on it. But so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, planning, hiring. So now this is just the one for the Southeast Library System one that's this Friday at, in Lincoln. The other ones may have different, potentially different right, presenters. Yes. Sally goes to all of them. <laughs> I like to. She does her thing at all of them. But depending on who gets booked as far as extra presenters and, and um, uh, sessions and workshops. There might be some people workshops. from their area that's right. been working with music for a long time. So look for those um, coming, being announced coming up in January. Well, yes. Yeah. Some will be in March. Often there's mm -hmm. two or three in March. Mm -hmm. I know the one in January is just getting organized, mm -hmm. so that's why it's not up there yet. But, so and then they're going to have, um, the Central Plains is going to have that one and then one in March that's in Broken Bow, I believe. Mm -hmm. And I haven't, we've been talking about the Western Library System, but mm -hmm. we're talking about a couple of different ideas so to be determined mm -hmm. to get. And, uh, Three Rivers Library System mm -hmm. because I think uh, Amiris is no longer there. They're mm -hmm. in the process of looking for it. Right. We'll see. We'll get one scheduled with them. Yeah. And then we'll get that scheduled. 
Um, we do have some questions about the um, workshops. Um, why don't those are recorded at all? Um, those are just in person. Those are in person. Yeah, they're so not no. recorded. Those are in person workshops. At this time. Yeah, and they aren't always on Fridays. This one just happens to be. Um, they're often on Friday. Yeah, and yeah. sometimes some of the um, presentations and information is made available depending on what people use. Um, and someone has a request wondering if you have something somewhere like O'Neill. I don't know what you're looking at, location size. But we'll see what we can work with. Usually the system director works mm -hmm. out a location. Mm -hmm. Although they ask me, can you get there? And most of the time I can. Yeah. But if I'm coming back from Sydney or Alliance or somewhere and they're wanting to mm -hmm. Depends on how it can be do worked it. out. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need to sleep. No, I want to drive safely. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> we'll take all those. Uh, yeah. We, we work out there when yeah, things are mm -hmm. scheduled together. It's nice. Yeah. All right. So that will wrap it up for today's show, I think. Unless anybody has any other things you want to mention, um, and you type Encompass Live in there. I'm going to show you where our, there it is, Encompass. Uh, you can type it in on our website. Um, and it will get to there. Or if you even just Google us, um, type into your search engine of choice. Um, I'm going to enter. Uh, so far, we are the Ooh. only thing called yes. that. <laughs> it still works. So, far, <laughs> so um, you will come up with us right at the top of your search results for anything uh, you look at on there. Um, so that wraps up today's show. Um, it will be added. Here is our archives. These are our upcoming shows, and our archives are listed right underneath that, and it brings you to a new page where we have all of our recordings, as I said, going back to the very first one, which was in January 2009, are all here. Um, the most recent ones are on top, so Sally's will be right here at the top here. Maybe by tomorrow, depending on how things work, we'll get things updated and processed. And this is the one from last week. We'll have a link to the recording, we'll have a link to her presentation, and a link to the handouts page where she posts those. And, um, um, and in the handouts, you have the URLs for those, um, the Groovy yes. Joe, and so that'll all be within those handouts. Yes, even the singing dance in your polka dot pants. Yeah, right? so those will I be included. Show you along. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> in those handouts. Kitchen disco. Kitchen disco, yeah. So that will be all included there. Everyone who attended this morning and who re uh, pre registered for today's show will get an email from me when we announce it um, to everyone. I'm letting you know that the recording is ready, so we'll it's out there. So that will be for this shoot show. We we'll hope you join us next week when our topic is Gorilla Storytime. Um, Rebecca McQuirkendale, who is the Assistant yeah. Library Director and Creative Director at Gretna Public Library here in Nebraska, um, also our um, President-elect for Nebraska NLA, Nebraska That's Library right. Association. Um, she'll be with us next week uh, talking about Gorilla Storytime. Um, this is... Uh, doing uh, story time things and, and uh, uh, what she has on here. Tips, tricks, rhymes, other things um, that she has for um, doing story times in your libraries. So if you, and she's asking, asking, actually asking for input from people before they attend. If you have any sort of, um, anything that you would like to teach to other librarians, oh, rhymes, nice. um, puppet shows, whatever it is that you do, um, you can submit instructions to Rebecca or even a video if you're really you know, wow. in that. Wow. Um, she has her email there. Um, this is her personal email, halfbooty at gmail.com, and she will um, share that as well um, next week when she does her presentation. So please do sign up for that one and any of our other shows that you see here on the schedule. I've got shows already booked starting into January. We're finalizing some descriptions and whatnot right now, so you'll see more shows coming up here. Um, as we get them worked out. Also, if you are a big Facebook user, Encompass Live is on Facebook, pop over there and give us a like. Um, we post to reminders, you know, I don't want to log in. Uh, like here's a reminder to log in for today's show um, about Library of Rock. I love the book. Yeah, um, and when our recordings are available, I post on here. Um, there we go, the recordings. So um, any new shows that are added. So please do, if you are big on Facebook, give us a like and you'll get notified over there about things going on on the show. Other than that, that wraps up for today's show. Thank you very much, Sally. Thank you. For sharing your, your book titles with us again this year. 
We love having them to do this. Um, it's good timing too. It's it's perfect timing, of course, for people playing or summer reading. But it's also good timing for people who are potentially still doing Christmas shopping. Yes, this is what I use it for. <laughs> so I have some notes for myself for things I may be getting for some nieces and nephews. Wonderful. Um, and thank you, everyone, for attending. Um, and uh, hope you'll join us um, next week on Angelica's Live. See you next time. Bye. -bye. Thank you.